President Hugo Chavez famously said, I quote, if we really want to eradicate poverty, let us give power to the poor. Now this is being done by a process called popular decentralization, and it's devolving power to the grassroots in a really participatory democracy. This is a downloading like we've experienced in, in Canada. And the communal councils are the means of achieving this. They're constructing change from below, from the grassroots, facilitating citizen participation and community um, uh, organization. The Bolivarian Revolution wants to build a participatory socialist democracy. It's not there yet. This is, this is a huge process, but at least we can say it's a beginning. And the communal councils aren't just an add-on. Uh, it's not like a little consultation group or advisory group. Um, it is a constitutionally recognized level of government. The community councils are a public power, a fundamental principle in the Constitution, and, the, and there are laws that govern the communal councils, um, the law of 2006 and 2009. So instead of viewing its citizens as a mass society or just as atomized individuals, the Bolivarian government wants to see organized, self-aware communities that partake in political life and that are not being, uh, being manipulated by the government. Um, they, they see these organized communities as the way in which the people can be the protagonist of, of, of their destiny. And so they're a venue. They're a venue for the diverse community organizations in their area of social groups and citizens that allow the people to uh, be directly involved in the public processes and the projects that aim to feed, to feed their real needs and the aspirations of that community and thus build an equitable and a socially just Venezuelan society. It, the communal council allow that there isn't just a jumble of organizations, but that these different organizations doing different tasks come together in complementarity and in coordination. This is a huge step for a people that has to go from years of passive political dependency, total zeroness in, on that scale, and clientelism, to a process of real political participation in the political decisions that affect their lives. Now, it involves education also, as well as activism, uh, because there is a need to uh, awaken the people's sense of collective responsibility, and that is achieved by working together for common goals. One only learns collective responsibility by actually doing it. It's like swimming. So the government, through its ministry, has a ministry especially to help these encourage the, the communal councils so they can carry out their functions, but they don't have the authority to order or to overrule the communal councils. Uh, the communal councils are relatively independent of the municipal council and the relationship is often rocky and I'll talk about that later, but a mayor or a governor who is opposed by the communal councils uh, does it as it, at its own peril. Now the communal councils are people's assemblies. The local citizens are empowered and they're encouraged to, form, to, to, to create these local councils and they initiate process, projects that, that are related to them. And so the people plan, carry out, control, and evaluate public policies and projects related to their everyday life. Um, so the assembly has that uh, function. One of its functions is social auditing. This is really important because there has been a great corruption uh, in, in the country and in, indeed in the region. And the idea is with many eyes, it'll be very hard to uh, continue the old corrupt ways. So. Um, they have uh, an executive, a financial committee, an oversight committee, and there are a series of committees. These are the ones that are uh, the committee for water, the committee for land, the committee for health. Uh, I'll talk about the health committees later because these are really important. Committee for small businesses, the committee for, um, for cooperatives and security and the environment. Remember, these are the people that are really living very, very close to the environment and to nature and to the, the sanitary or unsanitary conditions in, uh, around there. Um, the, they exist throughout the country. Right now, there are 30,179 registered community councils in the country. They, the assembly decides what their neighborhoods need. They make a budget. 
They receive direct funding from the federal government and also can receive money from the state or the municipal uh, governments. And the finance committee is the one that pr uh, promotes um, and takes care of that. And they have a municipal bank also. Um, out of a total national budget of 53 million, the communal councils have received 1 billion. They have implemented thousands of projects and established 300 communal banks that have received 70 million uh, dollars for microloans. To establish one of these uh, in an urban area, every communal council can go from 150 to 400 families. Uh, it's 20 in the rural areas and 10 families for the indigenous uh, place. They've been tremendously popular. Um, one of the first steps is very interesting to create one. They have a provisional team and this provisional team um, creates the geographical boundaries for the communal council, carries out a census and organizes an election. But the organization of the census is really interesting. It isn't just numbers, how many people. They actually try to write down the history of their neighborhood. And uh, um, this, is, this is very important because then they come to realize that yes, they are a community. Yes, we do have a history and they write it all down. And many of the histories of these communal councils are just fascinating. Um, the first election, uh, they have to have 30% of the people there and subsequent uh, decision-making the quorum is 20%. The great majority of the members of the communal council, the active members who are actually doing things are the women. Uh, overwhelmingly, they are the spokespersons for the communal councils. Now, the communal council has to li liaise with the local mayor and with the local municipality. This is a very important function, particularly when it comes to the budget. But when it comes to the budget, these communal councils have to really go in there and make sure that the, the municipal budget includes their, their, their decisions. So this is, as I said, uh, an, an area where there is a, a, a bit of a struggle with them. But they aren't just looking at the local uh, issues. They are also coming together with the other communal councils in what's called commune. And so the federation of the communes is the one that exerts um, political pressure at the higher level. Um, when I have been with the, commune, uh, the communal councils, I have been flabbergasted at their sophistication politically, not just what was happening locally, but what was happening in the country, and indeed the most fascinating international political conversations I've had in the country have been with people in the communal councils. This is very important because in the trade union movement in, in, in North America, certainly, uh, the trade unions have always been circumscribed. You can only talk about salaries. You can only talk about these conditions here. You're not supposed to talk about broader political things. And so this is one of the things of the communal councils. They are not, they, they see the dots, how they are connected. Um, but of course, it's all a question of learning to do all of this. Um, the communal council don't unfold against the federal government. On the contrary, the, the laws say that the federal government has, is mandated to support them and in actual fact encourages the neighborhoods to take control as this is the only way out of an attitude of dependency. It's also a way out of the insidious corruption. Um, there are opposition governors and there are opposition mayors who oppose the Bolivarian government and these try to ignore or to put obstacles on the side of the communal councils in their areas. And there are also others who are with the government and yet their mentality is still in the old style. So there is always you know, a power struggle sometimes for the, so that the municipality um, uh, you know, exert, uh, accepts the power of the communal councils. Um, and in the end, I would like to say that uh, the communal councils are not the end-all and be-all of a participatory, uh, a democratic, uh, socialist uh, new society. But certainly it is a wonderful beginning. It has been wildly popular. People who have never been consulted in any way whatsoever, all of a sudden are taking charge, are talking, are criticizing, are demanding, are presenting demands. And uh, this is what is new in, in Venezuela, that the people now have a voice, they now have, of course, a vote, but now they know how to go about 
um, getting the, uh, uh, the projects uh, that they need and at the same time learning about politics, which is very, very important.